Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the Exchange Life broadcast. I'm so glad you joined me today. And I tell you, we've got a, 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 a good a, a friend of mine, a, a guest or a friend or however you want to call it, Pastor Larry. There you go. Glad you're here today. Glad to be here. Awesome. And, and uh, Pastor of Foundations of Faith. So glad you're here to help us out today. So this is the Thank second you. taping we're doing for the second show today. Right. Awesome, yeah. And, uh, and, and so I thought something was unique because we were, you know, what, what I like about it, we, we can just get in the Word and we can just go. We don't have to, yeah. you know, we just go. We just flow. And uh, Don't get any better than this. It doesn't. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Galatians 2.20. And I want to start out uh, with, with Galatians 2.20. And I'm, yeah. I'm going to read it and I'm going to read the message translation. Okay. But it says here, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now I'm going to read it in the message translation because this is where I was at. This is the place that, that you know, and, I, and, and sometimes I tend to almost want to get stuck in this area. Sometime now I have to make that adjustment, but I'm going to read the message translation. It says, what actually took place is this. I tried keeping rules and working my head off to please God, and it didn't work. So I quit being a lawman so that I could be God's man. Christ's life showed me how enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego, listen to this right here, Larry. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion. And I am no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My ego. We can just stop right there. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got one. And what does that mean, ego? That means uh, it's, it's part of your identity. Yeah, you really. That's, it's, yeah, it's, it's part ego. of identity. Yeah. yeah, the ego. It says my ego is no longer central. Central. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about self-centeredness. <laughs> Why are you looking let's at me like that? About, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about being self-centered. Mm. Since I'm crucified with Christ, and what I found, even in being self-centered, is taking the focus off of him and pl- placing the focus on me. That's the part of being self-centered. Yes. Even to the point, Pastor Larry, even to the point where I began to spend so much time on spending time on meditating on what I don't do right. Right. If being self-centered and not God-centered. You know, uh, in the unregenerated state, the un- unsafe person, we're, we're always trying to achieve to get some sort of satisfaction, some sense of self-worth, some sense of uh, uh, ev- everything's good. Mm-hmm. Then when you come, you carry that into Christianity, when, when you become a believer, and uh, if you understand true spirituality, we carry that from the world into Christianity, and we're trying to do the same thing with God. We're mm-hmm. trying to please, be, not please God, but be pleasing to God. And what happened, God made us pleasing. He's accepted us. He's made us righteous. He's so made we, us holy. So we're trying to get something he's that already we've already... He's already pleased with us. We're trying to get something we already, he's already given us when we accepted the cross. And that's what Paul's saying here. He said, the life I live now is in Christ. It's what Christ did. It's what Jesus did. It's, it, all I do is just accept it. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm holy. I'm acceptable. It doesn't mean I do holy things. It doesn't mean I act righteous all the time. But the real me that I identify with, my born-again spirit, is just... Well, well, see, I'm glad you said that, too, because self-centeredness, it goes back to what we identify with, because uh, there are a lot of believers that we find ourselves identifying more with our flesh right. than, our, touch, than our spirit. Touch, taste, feel, see, it, we identify with the carnal man. Yeah, with the carnal man. We identify with, with that carnal man. man and not with the spiritual right. man. And so... Um, what Paul's talking about, he says, I have to identify with this new, this new, new creature, creature right. and who I am in Christ. 
right. and then allow Christ to move through me, operate through me. It's not it's not my ego anymore. Why should I care what people think? And a lot of times we care about what people think. Oh, don't do. get, don't, yeah. don't let nobody fool you now. Well, you you know, because I was telling you uh, about the show. You know, yeah. I was saying, well. I ought to ask for money, but, you know, I don't want... And what I'm saying is I don't want people to think I'm trying to rip them off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See? I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and, and as, I don't want people thinking this or thinking that, you know. And, and sometimes and, and sometime that, that happens, yeah. you know. But how do we rectify? How do we deal with that when those things come up? How do we deal with them as we know that we are... I am crucified with Christ. So how do I deal with that? Well, when you accepted Christ, even, even in Romans, it says you're dead. In Romans chapter, I think it's... Five, four, five it says you're dead, and your life is now in Christ. Mm -hmm. You're in Christ. You're you're, you're you're a dead person. You died to sin, you died to the things of the world, and you became alive to Christ. And so, what happens when you're in Christ now? Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "Old things have passed away; all things have become to come new." I spent I spent thirty years of my Christian walk, or or around there trying to be acceptable by God, looking in my past, trying to fix where I was going. And that's where most people are, are today, and even you, in the and, church. And if you're trying to drive and you're looking in that rear view mirror, not looking for it. You're going to hit the ditch. You're going to hit the ditch. You're going to yeah. have an awful. Yeah. You're gonna, that's, you're where, gonna, that's where my life gonna, is going from ditch to ditch. But when you understand that when you were born again, you became a new species of being that never existed before on the face of the earth. And at that point in time, your spirit now relates to God 100% and God relates to you. I, I, I used to have, have people tell me, they said, boy, when God looks at you, he, you know, he, he just sees Jesus, but he doesn't see filthy old you. And that's not true. You and I, the Bible says, look just like him. We're just like him. We are a species of being that came out of the resurrection when we, when Jesus accepted, when God accepted the sacrifice of Jesus and raised Him from the dead, a new creature, a new species of being was created, and God said, "By faith, you can be just like that." By faith. By faith, you can be just like that. You are now Second Corinthians five saying, "If any man be in Christ, Christ, he is a new creature." And this is the, the I used to put, put a period there, didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away; all things have become new. Mm -hmm. Most believers are still trying to look in their past. To fix because the that's what we, because that's what we identify with. Exactly. We, a lot of times we identify all with the our bad, past. The, the good, all the bad, even, even the good. And you can become good. egotistical, right? right. Egotistical, if, you, yeah. if you if you just look at all the triumphs in your mm -hmm. life, you can become narcissistic. Say, yeah. If yeah, you will. yeah, look at me. Look you at know. me. I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Right. I mean, it, it cuts both ways. Right. But when you when you say, I started over. My life started over when I came to Jesus. And this is who I want to identify with. Yeah, but I'm like him. Identify yeah. with him. That's who I'm like. That's the Bible the, says, as he is, so, so are, are we, we in this present in world. In this present world. Not in the world to come. Right now. But in this present world right now. First John and, says when we get there, meaning when we walk through the veil, we're going to behold him and we'll see that we're already like him. Mm -hmm. It start, see, God is in the, he's, he's been in the restoration business since the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and so Jesus was, was part of that restoration to create a man, a God man in his image. That's, that, that's, we come out of the resurrection. We are the children of God now by virtue of the resurrection and our faith in that, what Christ did. What else can you add to that? Oh, we can add a whole lot of stuff to it. I mean, I know what you're saying, but I mean, but when you say that, we as the church, I'm can, talking about religion has added a whole lot of stuff to what you just said in that, yeah. that short narrative of something that seems yeah. so simplistic can yeah. become so complex. You know, I believe that scripture, and you might be able to tell me, it says that um, the road is narrow, but the broad road is the way yeah. to destruction. So, uh, it's, in a, it's in the uh, gospel. Uh, it's in the gospel, I think it's, uh, don't remember. Why is the path that leads to destruction? There's the path that leads right. to life, and few who find it. Mm -hmm. I'd always understood that to be in terms of, of heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to go to hell, and, and you right. stay on this road to destruction. Right. But that has nothing to do. It has to do with the life of God. The life of God. And, and this is what, what my lightning fast. My revelation was that the narrow path is Jesus. Yeah, it is. The simplistic of yeah. what Jesus has done. Yeah. And the broad road is all these philosophies and all these religions and all this stuff. And your you agenda right, and the, what yeah, you Your think agenda and, and if you go, you know, you got to pray five times a day. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to uh, be put on the cross. You got to do this and all this kind of stuff. And that's the philosophies of man and, and man's ideology and man's philosophies is that yeah. broad road. Yeah, Paul called it doctrines of demons. Yeah, doctrines. Yeah, the doctrines <laughs> of demons. And then, and then you've got this real narrow road that says simply... 
trust in what Jesus has already done. Right. That he's already paid the price. But with, with our egos and, and what we tend to identify or gravitate toward, um, um, and even being that self-centered where we're just so consumed with what people think about us or yeah. what they say about us or or just so con we can be even so consumed in our own agenda. I mean, you can you can you're a pastor of a church, and if you're not careful, you can be so consumed of growing your church that you totally don't minister to the people that you have. Yeah, I tell you, one of you the know. things that uh, that and I don't know if this brings it down down to where where you want to go, but relationships mm -hmm. have the ability. They don't they they don't always, but they have the ability to to uh, hinder at best, uh, our relationship with God. As an example, I love my wife. I value, I esteem what she says. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I found in my life, I will follow her input knowing that God is saying to some, something else mm -hmm. to me. Now, some people say, well, that's sin. Well, okay. But the, bo the bo bottom line is I esteem her opinion over God's opinion. And the trick in, in that to me is that in good relationships is how to walk with God and maintain the good relationships right. with the people around you. Right. Most of us fear men if we, we, we were honest. You yeah, know? we fear men, yeah. And, and, and we value the, the, the what opinions. What will they of say about me? What will they yeah. think about me? Well, to, to, to me, it's a conflict, too. You know, it's, it's like I don't like conflict. I, I, I just, you know, I, but I know I, if you're going to lead or if you're going to be in a position of, of, a, of leadership, you're going to have conflict. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not, you're going to have conflict with uh, other people in, in relationships. But ultimately, it comes down to what do you think about this, God? Mm -hmm. And being able to communicate to a person that you're in conflict with in love mm -hmm. and say, look, you know, I, I value your opinion. I value what you say, but this is what I believe God is saying right. to me, and I'm going to follow it. And if if they get their knickers in a twist, that's between them and God. Mm -hmm. Even though it it might hurt sometimes, because I've said things to people knowing that I was right, and it 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 hindered a relationship with them for right. Some of them ne ne never recovered. But you have to determine. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk what with God you? the best I can. The best yeah. I can. Well, let me ask you this right here. What do you tend to identify with? Um, I noticed during times of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Satan, he will attack you, and he'll use the same thing over and over. He don't, he don't, he don't say he's not going to attack you with something that I might have, but you don't. He's going to use those same tools yeah. over and over, uh, you know, with us. But I noticed myself that sometimes my battle of Sometimes you can get depressed about things. You can, yeah. you can get depressed by things. And, and it's a lot of times what I find myself doing is beginning to identify with the failures. Yeah. Well, it, it, and, 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 and this is the whole thing, though. See, sometimes those failures, those failures are things that nobody knows about. No, it's just you and God. Just yeah. me and God. You know, to me, it comes down, as, uh, you, you mentioned depression and, 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 uh, and or, or, you know, mm -hmm. to me, it comes down to do you accept yourself? Because God accepts you. When we don't accept ourselves, we're going to be depressed. Yeah. Because yeah. there's, there's there's nothing there other mm -hmm. than uh, other than our, our 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 carnal person. And so, can you just tell me a little bit about your story? Because I heard your story about, you know, about when you was in Texas, even in the mental capacity yeah. and different things, and how Satan tried to rob you yeah. from your life, tried to rob you yeah. from this relationship. Yeah, I had a what, relationship what was, what that was went south on? of. Uh, um, and it, it just, uh, it really did to devastate, to, devastated me. Ended up in a mental hospital. Ended up meeting uh, my, my pastor, who I'm still friends with 40 something years later. Uh, good, good friends. And uh, in fact, he was the only, he, he looked at me at one point, he said, you're the only person I ever looked at, thought there was no hope for. That's where I was. Mm -hmm. But what I, what I did was, when I first met him, I knew that I could not help myself. Mm -hmm. I knew it. I, I, if, if I didn't get somebody to take my hand and help me, I wouldn't have made it. And I was suicidal and everything. So I went to him and I, I just met him and I said, I said, I'm going to make a, 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 a pact with you. If you will help me, I will listen to you. I will follow whatever you tell me. If you tell me to stand in the corner of my head, I'll do it and just believe that it's God. Mm -hmm. I won't question you. I won't, I won't, I won't. Anyway, it, it shocked him because Pastors usually don't get that response. <laughs> right. And so anyway, I just come, he, but he told me, he said, you just come and sit under the word. He said, he said, the word has a way of changing our thinking, and it does. Mm -hmm. 
And so for four or five years, I still battled depression, uh, but, but over time it lifted because I got my focus off of me. That's all depression is. It's my agenda. It's right. what can I do to help myself? Mm -hmm. And when you come to a point where you realize I'm through helping myself, if God don't help me, I'm, I'm, I'm done in. I'm, it's, it's no, there's no hope. I, re, I was at a point of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began to see I've, I need help and I trusted this man to help me. And I, I listened to him, which is whatever, I did, I did whatever he asked of me. If, if he told me black was green, I'd say, amen. <laughs> I just trusted it until I could reach a place in my life where I could stand on my own. I, and there's Christians out there like that. Um, and worst case, there's even Christians in, in churches or Christians everywhere that have developed their own agendas and, and they stay away from, from other believers because they don't want to be challenged in their agenda. Mm -hmm. It might be a good agenda, it might be a bad agenda. Right. And, and so, but even in your situation, and even, uh, and I want to just talk to some believers right now, maybe you're going through depression. I, you know, maybe even some of you are contemplating suicide. I mean, it's real to people. I mean, I mean, these things happen yeah. even, even in, 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 yeah, yeah, in the body of Christ, and and uh, everything's not relegated to you know demons. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, being possessed, but these things are you know believers are being harassed, and 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 but I, but but what I want you to understand here is, is that what is your focus? And I think you hit it. What is your focus? Yeah. They're, what what is your fault? Either you're you're self-centered, yeah. You know, well, it's it's about you. You're thinking uh, even what can I do to make myself right? What 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 can I do to get here? I mean, I was I was talking to God the other night about something, something and I said, God, you gotta help me. You know, yeah. I just said, God, you gotta help me. What That's can the best I word do? in the English language can, when you're in the throne room. Help. <laughs> I went boldly before the throne of grace yeah. in, in time in time of need, yeah. and I was saying, God, you know, you gotta help me, you know. And, and so for you out there, just call out to Him right now, and say, God, help me, you yeah. know, uh, because that's that's where it's at. And, and you, you, your life doesn't have to end now. So if you're suicidal, you don't have to do what yeah. you're thinking about doing. Um, you know, you need to identify with Jesus. Yeah. And. And, and, and like, like you said earlier, it's who we are. Yeah. My, my, one, one, one other thing that was kind of a, a, a I guess, a afterthought on what we was talking about. My view of God was one of an angry God or one that I couldn't relate to. Mm -hmm. So I felt hopeless. I felt totally hopeless. I felt like I couldn't even turn to him. I felt like all, everything that I'd ever done wrong in my life was now, now I was carrying it on my own shoulders. I didn't know enough to turn to him. I'd never heard the gospel. At you never point, heard the good news. I never heard the good news. And, it, and then I didn't get it initially. It took me several years of unraveling this, this thing, these things in my heart where I came to a place where I realized, number one, God accepts me. Mm -hmm. He accepts even the most vile sinners. Yeah. That blows, that blows a lot of pe people's minds. You know, you mean the mur murderer that's in prison and mm -hmm. he's, he's going to death row? God, God accepts him just like he, he did for the guy that stole the candy uh, mm -hmm. uh, out of the candy store. Mm -hmm. Same way. No difference. And all he's doing is waiting on that person to receive. Just turn. Just turn and receive. Just whosoever. Turn, whosoever. Re should call return. upon the name of the Lord. And and uh, so did you try keeping the rules? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, during this Absolutely. time, I mean, because. Well, you're trying to fix yourself. So that means you trying say, to keep the rules. See, and, and this is what a lot of, of, of religious thinking does. So well, if you just do this and you do this and you do this and you do this, then it all works. Well, it doesn't all work because you can't. Even, even on your best day, you can't keep the rules. Then I went from there to the spirituality. Now that I'm spiritual, I mean, man, Jesus, Jesus is, is, is everything. Let's live a Walt Disney Christianity. We're gonna live happily ever after. Man, when I came to Christ, things got worse mm -hmm. because there's a lot of junk that I was focused right. on. I had to change my focus. Right. Had to, and it took time. It, for, for me, now some people get it. I wasn't raised in a, in a church that, that, that taught relationship with God except through other through a through a priest or through, a, through 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 the church itself, and um, that's not to slam you know Catholicism. These these are good good people, mm -hmm. and, and and many of them are saved. Right. But there's also Protestant folks that that they they live and die by the building. That they, right, right, you know, exactly. Or what, right. What, whatever it is. You yeah, know? yeah. What, and, whatever that thing and, is. And when that and, disappoints you, you lose mm -hmm. hope. You you get. So, and I'm gonna read this again because I love this message translation because I've seen myself, I'm, I'm looking at this, I've seen myself at, at some point in time. What actually took place is this, I tried keeping rules, 
and working my head off. We got, man, I started out young working in the church, and that's yeah. what it was, working in the working. church. I was like 13 or 14, like assistant Sunday school superintendent. I mean, I sung on the choir, done all that kind of stuff. But as I got older, I was miserable, man. Yeah, you are. I was just plain right miserable, and I didn't understand why, what was going on. Yeah. I know. But, but I learned to do church, Yeah. but I didn't understand relationship with God. Yeah. You put on the smiley face every Sunday, yeah. and you come yeah. there, how's it going? Man, yeah. it's great. Bless God. Yeah. And on the inside, you were dying. Yeah, on the inside, I was dying, like I say, because nobody, you know, they only took what they knew, yeah. but I never heard relationship with God was the most important yeah. thing, is having that relationship with Him and how they have that relationship yeah. with Him. I heard you could have a relationship, but you had to do this. You had to keep the, keep the commandments, and you had to, to do all these laws, and you had to do all this stuff. I heard that part, part of it, what they were teaching, but I never heard about that Jesus. Yeah. Did he actually, He's, they told me to, that, to repent for your sins and those kind of things, but actually see people walking it out or, or having that understanding yeah. of what really happened in this new life, what really happened in this exchange life. Yeah. You know, so, so listen, listen I tried keeping rules and, and working my head off to please God. It didn't work. So I quit being a lawman so that I could be <laughs> God's God, man. man. Yeah, there you go. Christ's life showed me how, enabled me to do it, and I identified myself completely with him. You know what I was thinking um, when I was reading this? One of the things I was thinking, I said, now, before I open my big mouth, because a lot of times I know you talk about you can put how many feet, put both your feet in the mouth at the same time? Yeah, yeah. I said, open I mouth, said, change foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, if I could just shut down just for a few seconds and say, yeah. okay, Holy Spirit, what should I say? Yeah what a difference that would make. Just acknowledging his presence. Yeah. Just acknowledging his presence. And, you know, it may be a word to encourage someone. Yeah. It may be a word to deliver somebody out of something. He may give me a word. But just in our everyday life, now we want to play super, super spiritual or whatever in church, but I'm talking about just in our everyday life of, or how I could speak a word to my kids that could alter and change their future forever. Or how I could speak a word to my wife that may be hurting and I don't even know that she's hurting. But in, and in that, what I'm saying, acknowledging and identifying with who lives in me. In you, yeah. Acknowledging it, acknowledging it, not only acknowledging that he lives, but begin to walk and identify with who it is that, that live in me and, and take my agenda and put it and take my agenda and say, this agenda is no good. I'm yeah. God's, I'm his, I'm yours, Lord. Yeah. And, and to take my ego and say, okay, ego, you know, you know, I, yeah. I live and desire to live and walk after the one that lives in me. You know, one of the things experientially that, that um, I've experienced, I'm, uh, I, I grew up in a, in a household that was uh, uh, dysfunctional mm -hmm. at best. And, uh, but over the years, I, I hated conflict. You know, mm -hmm. I, was, I was one of these kids that grew up, I just, I just hated it, I'd run from it. I, I was one of these, I, I didn't get in fights or anything like that. And then it's like, Somewhere along the way, after I was born again, it's like I was always in the middle of conflicts, and I hated it, and people were just running over me and all that stuff. And I can remember the day that I stood up and said, enough's enough, and I realized two things. One, when we stand in our authority, and we stand in who we are, mm -hmm. and we don't have to get aggressive about it, but just get assertive and just say, look, I've had enough of this, and just stand, all of heaven stands up and applauds. It yes. really does. Most, most of us don't walk in the authority that God has given us. God doesn't want us to be cowed down. He doesn't want us to be passive. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to be aggressive either, but we can be assertive. And, and, this, is, and this is what it says this, I am the vine, you are the what? Right. Branches. Right. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. John 15, 5. Apart from Christ, we can do what? Nothing. nothing. Yeah. You know, 90% of the battle, in my opinion, is just acknowledging what's in us, in Christ. And what, 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 what he's what, provided what, for but, us. But that's, what, that's, that's the whole thing is, is we're so, sometimes we get so self-centered yeah. or we identify with the old, the old person yeah. and not the new person. And, that, and we're not... Um, what is it, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or we're not a bipolar where you got the old you and the, some people teach you got the old man and the new man. That old man gone. He ain't there. 
And so, and so the thing about it is a lot of times it's just what, what are we spending our time focusing on or identifying with? You know, uh, it is not what I can do for God. You know, we want to do it ourselves. We want to do it our way. We want to do it the way we think best. We want to get the credit. Now we, that we are saved, we think we can do it all in our own human strength. Mm -hmm. We even try to conduct his work in our fleshly uh, uh, nature. God will have nothing to do with that because it's not who we are. Is now we have him on the inside of us. The Bible says he'll come in a bowl with us. Mm -hmm. You know. I asked the Lord one time, I said, God, how will I ever figure all this stuff out? And, and the answer was so profound. He said, you're not supposed to figure it out. You're supposed to know that I figured it out. Oh, man, that's... <laughs> Well, that's what and, I look at. And this trust, you know, yeah. I, I, you just trust me. You know, can you trust me? I'll take you no, no, no matter what, what you're in, what you're walking through, good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter. Even when, when you're, 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 you're not acting right, doing right, being right, just trust mm -hmm. me. And, and, and this is the thing, even acting right, being right, doing right. The more I know him, the more desire I, that I have to do no. right. I mean, you know, well, it's, it's just a it's something in me that's natural. It's not like you're trying to do is, right. It's just who you are. Yes, yeah, the new creature. You want to please God. Yeah, you want it's, to you please want to. God. It's not trying to get. You're pleasing to God. You're pleasing you, to God. It's, it's, like, it's like my daddy. Have you ever heard that, that scripture that says, the joy of the Lord is my strength? Mm -hmm. And I used to think when I was in those moments of depression that God, I was going to have a burning bush experience with mm -hmm. joy. Mm -hmm. God was just going to <laughs> joy, mm -hmm. boom, magic. You know, mm -hmm. it's like a magic wand. And I, I, I came to understand that that's not what that means. What that means is, is that when I look at my daddy and he looks and he sees that I accept you, that brings joy to me. Mm. It's his joy mm -hmm. in me or in who I am mm -hmm. that gives me strength. strength. It's the same with a, chi a, fa a, a child and a, and a natural father. He sure is. You know, I, 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 got, I raised every, every, every one of my kids to, to tell them, you're, you're, you're a good boy, you're a good girl. You know, you'll do well in life. Encouraging them, you're blessed. Speaking those words. I tell you, but I'm, time, man, I'm look, speaking time. into their life, yeah. those, those things. That, Where did the time go, man? I got about a few seconds left. <laughs> time is just shot by. Listen. I know that you enjoyed this broadcast, this ministry. This is a ministry is. That, that I know that you enjoyed it. It blessed you. Look, look me up on Facebook, Tony C. Taylor on Facebook. Hit me up on Facebook. Let me know. And uh, we want to continue to encourage you. You can call us for prayer or whatever you want. We're going to pray with you and agree with you what God says about you. And listen, we love you. And, and God loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for you. No matter what you're going through, don't give up. God is there for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now I've got to go now to next time. Remember, we love you.